This is part one of the Central Valley Model Works 200 foot double track truss bridge kit build. The instructions. Kit comes with four packs of goodies. This uh, I've built their, their uh, single truss 150 foot or single track 150 foot bridge and uh, it was a little difficult but not too bad but this one has a lot more uh, varied angle cuts so I'm hoping I'm able to complete this build without totally messing it up. So we're going to start with part one which is the floor assembly. So let me uh, get these parts off the sprues and I will return. Okay, now that we have those off the sprues, we've got uh, about 32 of these. These are the, um, let me look, stringers. You'll have seven of these cross bearers, um, four each of the splice joiners per cross bearer and you'll have a locating strip one each for the cross bearer. Set this off to the side. So the first thing you got to do after you get them cleaned up is you're going to take these splice joiners and you're going to slide them into the little slots here like so. Do not glue these in uh, so that you'll be able to square your bridge up afterwards. But what you do have to glue in, I've got all seven of mine done there, just, just put those pieces in. Now we have to take this little locating strap. This is a very fine thin strap, so be careful you don't break it, take it off your sprues. I did break one even though I was trying to be careful and you're going to place it this on top of those there is a little indent let's see if I can get this to focus yeah it's not going to focus for me there we go anyways there's a little indent here on this end there is a little locating bracket in the middle there and there and then another indent on this end so you can get it exactly centered and be like I said be careful that you don't glue these splice joints together to this yet so you gotta be careful to just glue down here in the middle here in the middle here in the middle here and down here in the end so avoiding these four pieces Okay, in the next step, you're going to take, after you've glued this bottom brace on, and that's holding these little pieces on, you're going to glue these stringers and only glue them where it attaches to the pinhole. There's a little pin on the ends that will fit into the little pinhole. You're going to do one, two, three, four, let's see, two, four, six of them are going to be in a single assembly. And then the last one will be a double assembly. <clears throat> you have to use a spacer to give you these, these little uh, shims to set underneath there. So as you're gluing these together, it's keeping these located properly because of that bottom piece that you glued on. You need to have that little bit of uh, shim underneath there to keep them so they're all going nice and straight. And then once you have done that, you're going to take and put them all together like so. Glue them all in. Again, be careful not to glue these pieces to this piece 
because you want to be able to move these back and forth for squaring up your bridge base. So you're going to do this until you have them all together, daisy chain together, and you'll end up with one great big long section. Okay, so now we have all the pieces together, and it's quite long. Tilt the camera across here so you can see it. That's the whole assembly together that you daisy chain together. One thing I forgot to mention earlier was make sure when you're putting these on in that the inside of this has a groove here for adding pieces in a little bit here. You can see them right there. So make sure you put one on the outside of this one and one on the outside of that one so these grooves are facing each other. And then on this one do the same thing so the grooves are facing each other. And again the shims is to help keep everything lined up as you were gluing it level. And that's the end of that step. Okay, they include four steel strips. It's just like a metal banding that would be around a pallet if you've ever worked in a shipping dock or something. You know what I'm talking about, these metal bands. They're a little bowed when you get them, so they want you to try to get them as flat as possible because it will help aid in keeping things squared up later. So you do that, and then you take a file. And on the end here, I don't know if I get this to focus, you want to file the corner off on each end here and then deburr it. And you only have to do that on one end of the strip. And what that does is it will aid you in being able to thread this through some holes. And I'll show you the difference there possibly. One is squared. This one's a squared edge. And then this one here slightly rounded the corners or the edges yeah and then filed it clean and then you want to take all these intermediate braces and there's 16 of them and you want to slide them through a rod this is a pre-fit just slide them in there make sure they'll go in there and slide up and down easily each individual one this will aid in uh, helping you get this to slide through here in a second then you take and, and I've, I've got the uh, shims underneath here just to keep these lined up with these holes here on these braces so the wide end there's a thinner on the top wider at the bottom the thicker goes on the bottom and you, now you're placing this in between these these little slots here and then what you're going to do is after you get most of them lined up this will go a little more than halfway through so we're going to go through the first one Slide it in. Oops. I was supposed to hold that still when I did that. There we go. Gotta pinch this this one here because there's nothing else to help hold it. But then you just kind of fit it through each one. Each one of the holes. I think you can see that. Yep. And you might have to kind of help get it along there. This one here is going to keep moving on me, but we won't worry about that one for the moment. And you're going to keep pushing this down through. Yeah. Well, I'm just having fun here. Shims are moving out and they're allowing them to move on me. There we go. So you get just past the inside here. So the, the metal banding is inside of these two ends here and then you've got to come from the other side with this other one and you're going to come through this way and you're going to pass between these two and it's going to be kind of hard to do because you're going to be double double banded strength coming through these two holes here so it's going to be harder and this band's going to come all the way through so you're going to be double banded here doubled here doubled here and it'll stop just before you get to this one here and you'll do that on both sides. 
on this side, and then you put all your intermediate braces into this side here. Okay, now we're threading the steel banding cable through. I've done this side over here. I don't know, you can't tell if there's two bands side by side. So I've got this one in here. It ends right here. Now this one, I'm coming from the other side. I'm going to slide it up. And what I found a little easier to do is take a little pair of pliers to grab a hold of the banding so it helps hold me. And then I'm pushing in with this finger and holding the whole thing still. Yeah, I'm sure that's what I'm doing. And you got to get it to slide in past this band through the same hole. And we got to go again to the next one. And it's not, this one's going through pretty easy. Again, hold it. I'm holding it in because the band's on this side. So I'm holding it and then using the pliers to help kind of push it through. There we go. And you've only got to get past till you get your bands to the end. So they're just inside these two pieces here. So now this piece is done. My bands are in. And you do not glue these pieces in, these intermediate braces in. Uh, uh, those will be glued in when you go to square everything up, leaving these pieces unglued from this piece and the intermediate braces uh, unglued from these pieces allows you to try to move things around like this to get everything squared up when you get to that point. Okay, the next step is you're going to do the floor end caps. And these are the ones, if you read on here, it says Central Valley Model Works on there. <clears throat> you got to put, make sure you have the shim underneath here. There is little divots. You can see there's four of them on there. I'm going to make sure that the, the these uh, braces here go on the outside. So not on the inside, but on the outside of those. And you're going to glue those like so on the end here. Okay, on to the next step, which is the bottom lace. These are a really great idea here. Uh, I did their 150 foot punch plate bridge, and they didn't come with this little uh, locator square. So it's got a little pin in there. There is rivets on the bottom of it. So you just have to make sure that on these plates, the rivets that are on the end here, which I don't know if you can see or not, are facing downwards. One is labeled, go on first. And then the other one that you put on has a memory of Jack, etc., etc., with his birth and death date. So pretty simple operation. A little bit of glue. These will bend a little bit so you can line up the pen pretty easy. Spin it around. There's no wrong way to put them. There's, these are angled either way as long as you keep your rivets in the bottom. That's it. Pretty simple to do. You'll have, uh, let's see, two, four, six, eight of these to do, but pretty simple. The hardest part was getting all the little flash and stuff off of them. That was the hardest part of the whole section of this. Okay, now that we got all the cross braces uh, glued together, we have to take a straight edge. They recommend 24 inch or larger. I only had an 18 inch. I'm going to have to work with that. And you're going to take your base and you're going to flip it upside down so that your locating straps that were on the bottom edge here are facing up. And you get this bottom edge along your strip, your uh, straight edge, so everything's nice and squared. I've got a block holding here. I was putting blocks on each one of these, but now I've got to add this cross brace. 
on here, and I couldn't, so I couldn't have my uh, ABC, my one, two, three blocks there holding everything in. So I put them on top here to kind of weigh them down and hold them right to the edge of the, of the uh, straight edge. This cross brace can only be glued on half of this piece right here. I know you probably can't see it that well because the next one you lay has got to share this locating notch surface here. So you got to be careful to glue this down. This is going to be a real pain in the butt. I did their single track, 150 foot uh, single track truss bridge and this was a real pain to do on that one. So I'm assuming it's going to be a real pain to do on this one. but. That's the gist of it. I'm not going to try to glue this while I'm talking to you guys. It'll take me forever. We shall return. Alrighty. After a little bit of fiddling, we got all those braces on there, those cross braces, all the way down. Got everything nice and squared up. Of course, you got to make sure you square it before you put your cross braces on, like I said earlier. Then what you're supposed to do is you flip her over. Your cross braces are down on the bottom like they, like they would be. And add you some weights to help keep everything nice and flat while the glue sets up and dries real well. A couple things I wanted to mention about this kit that I forgot to mention earlier and, I, and I'm finding out here. The instruction manual on this one is 15, 20 times better than the instruction manual that they put out with their 150 foot punch plate bridge. The uh, manual on the 150 foot one was really hard for me to follow. That's why I started decided to make this video because I thought as hard as it was for me to follow on the other one that I would make a video for someone to be able to follow along with this one. And this is fairly easy if you pay attention what what he's uh, written in the manual. This goes together, at least so far, this uh, floor assembly has gone together really easy. Um, I did not do the bridge ties to the floor assembly. I'm cheating. I'm just, I've am just i got some uh, Walther's three foot bridge track that I'm just going to lay on top of here and adhere to it. So I did not need their, their ties or their guard timbers. Um, so this part I was able to skip, which is page eight and nine. Um, so the next part I'm, is is the box girders, which are a lot of fun because you have to take all these little itty bitty pieces off and sand them and deburr them and deflash them and, and uh, glue two pieces together in order to make a box girder. Not real hard to do, just really time consuming. At least it was on the uh, shorter bridge which is about 18 inches long this one is about 29 inches long when it's assembled so I know I've got a lot of uh, box girders that I'm going to have to build um, but that's it for this uh, section of the video I won't waste any more of your time um, watch for part 2 where I start assembling the box girders and start uh, assembling the, uh, the upper part of the uh, bridge alright thanks for watching I hope this helps somebody out.